Hi, my name is Sydney Hopkins and I'm a senior majoring in international studies and I'm excited to be here today to share my senior capstone project, The Factor of Time in Peace Process Success. This project started with a relatively straightforward curiosity of if negotiation time affects the success rates of peace processes. I eventually established my focus as seeking to answer the question, does the number of peace agreements as a proxy for length of negotiation impact the success of peace processes? I chose to use number of agreements as a proxy because while the end of peace agreements are often well-documented, the first day of negotiation is not, and by using the number of agreements in a single piece process, it eliminates that barrier. As I dove into the literature, I covered what causes and solves conflict and the lack of standardization in the field um, on definitions such as success itself and key factors that impact peace durability, which are mediation, third party intervention, pre existing conditions, adaptability, and state capacity. The gap in the literature is time. There was only one study I could find that looked specifically at the factor of time, and it was even limited in the type of agreements it evaluated. So I wanted to fill that gap of studies focusing specifically on time. The theory behind time as an important factor is deliberation theory, or the thought that through negotiation and the exchanging of viewpoints, opposing parties reach a consensus. This ultimately leads to my hypothesis that as the number of agreements in a peace process increase, success will increase. My research design was to create two unique variables from the already established Uppsala Conflict Data Program Peace Agreement data set. These two calculations are days, which is the number of days the peace agreement held. I chose to use the unit of days because years was too large a unit to capture nuance. And the second calculation is count or the number of agreements in a peace process. I did these two calculations for each of the 356 unique variables in the Uppsala data conflict, Uppsala conflict data program peace agreement data set. I then graph my data for visual analysis and run a logistic regression to investigate my data. So on the left here, you see a sample of my database. The green represents the pre-existing UCDP data with the notable alteration that for peace agreements that are still in effect, I had to input the day of my calculation to effectively generate my unique variables, which are represented in blue. And of course, my independent variable is the number of agreements or count, and my dependent variable is success or durability in days, and that is the title days. So when I began my graphing, I first did a graph of just the number of agreements in a piece process. So here you see for each um, data point I had on the bottom, there are 256 different agreements. And in the overarching piece process they were a part of, I represented that with the totals. So you can see there are a large number of agreements that were only one agreement in the entire piece process. And then as you move to the right, it increases how many agreements were in one piece process. And then when you overlay that orange line with the number of days an agreement held, you start to see this relationship that as the number of agreements goes up, it seems like there's a trend of agreements lasting for longer days. And that was confirmed by the trend line that is input and ends around um, 5,000 days. And so then I wanted to represent the failures in peace processes versus the days that they held for. So that's what you're seeing here. The gray shows all the agreements that have failed and then the blue just kind of represents how many days those agreements were at. Um, you do start to see a trend that all agreements that failed are below or around 2000 days. And then when you combine that all together, you just kind of get a larger picture of failures versus the number of agreements versus how many days an agreement lasted for. 
And then in my statistical analysis, I found that my p-value was 0 0.001, which is a positive correlation and is statistically significant, meaning my findings support my hypothesis. So in conclusion, my research finds that there is support for the hypothesis that the number of agreements in a peace process and the success it will last is a correlation. My implications are that policymakers and diplomats should focus on building series of agreements instead of singular agreements that encompass all issues of a conflict. And my future research is to investigate that 2000 days threshold, um, which is highlighted in this graph, of course. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I look forward to answering your questions in the Zoom presentation. Thank you.